anything that eats phytoplankton is also going to have an effect on primary productivity and it's really kind of a direct effect if you're out measuring how much phytoplankton are in the water and phytoplankton are eating them as fast as they grow well then you're not going to see an increase in phytoplankton because they all went into the zooplankton and we see that in some cases particularly in very tightly coupled food webs that we find in the ocean but zooplankton can also control primary production in that way simply by eating them so as i say here an oceanographer might be observed no net increase in chlorophyll the chlorophyll concentration may remain the same but the phytoplankton may just be dividing as fast as they can the only problem is the zooplankton are eating them as fast as they are growing so phyto zooplankton may in that effect uh, for those kinds of measurements, if you're looking at chlorophyll as the measurement or some other thing for increase, you may see no net primary production at all because in that case, it's all going into the zooplankton. It also turns out those zooplankton also stimulate primary productivity. They stimulate it by peeing. And if you've ever traveled out in the desert or if you spent time outdoors, you may have heard that, you know, save a plant or help a plant by peeing on it. Well, that's exactly true because your urine, just like the urine of zooplankton, contains ammonium. And ammonium is an important nitrogen source or an alternate nitrogen source for phytoplankton in the world ocean. So phytoplankton can actually stimulate primary productivity, particularly where nitrate, nitrate has been diminished. So when nitrate is completely removed from the water column, sometimes phytoplankton growth is sustained merely on the zooplankton excretion. Zooplankton also um, supply nutrients through what's called sloppy feeding. Have you ever had a bunch of people over to watch a football game or a TV or something like that, and they're sitting around eating Doritos, and you see the Doritos go down their, you know, down their chest, and they go like this, and then the next day you go and clean up your house, and you pull out the cushions, or maybe you do that, you know, months later or something like that. And you see all the bits of food, sloppy feeding. Zooplankton do the same thing. So when zooplankton are eating, when those little copepods are eating uh, diatoms, they crack them apart, and when they crack them apart their contents spill out and when you spill out the contents of a phytoplankton into the water well then you have more dissolved nutrients so zooplankton interact with phytoplankton in interesting ways they alter the supply of nutrients they physically or not physically but biologically actually remove phytoplankton but they also have ways of contributing to the growth of phytoplankton as well so a complete understanding of primary productivity in the ocean also relies upon a complete understanding of the role that zooplankton play in primary productivity here's some examples of zooplankton from Newport Inlet here's some copepods here you see the two antennae classic copepod and here's a muroplankton an organism that's only planktonic for a particular uh, short time versus the holoplankton which are planktonic for their entire lives but here's a polychaete worm and all of these kinds of organisms can actually eat phytoplankton and the other thing you see in this figure these sort of brown amorphous blobs it's zooplankton poop and this zooplankton poop as it turns out is an important food source for other organisms living in the water column as well as an important food source for benthic organisms living on the bottom and we'll talk a little bit more about that when we talk about food webs in chapter 14. Here's one of those copepods that feed on those phytoplankton again one of the most numerous crustaceans in the world ocean I just want to remind you of that so rates of primary production can be controlled under some circumstances by the copepods uh, in the ocean as well as by krill who are feeders particularly in polar environments and feed on algae living underneath uh, sea ice the ice algae as well as some phytoplankton as well so just kind of giving a reminder of what different kinds of zooplankton look like 